Hi Colleen, Ian here. Colleen, so this is that video we discussed with regards to QField, which is the app which you can run on an Android phone which will sync with your QGIS project. So I've set up a little project which I will send you the files for and this is what it's going to look like. So we've got our study area, our grid, and then this um, image is uh, it's basically downloaded and extracted from the, the open street map I think this one's actually the Ezri, one of the Esri images, but it's basically it's not streamed in, it's within the project. Okay, so this is an image on its own, and it is a JPEG, it's not a TIFF. And I think that's important, um, the JPEG is quite a bit smaller than a TIFF, and unless you've got quite a small area, uh, when we upload this project to our phone at a later stage, a TIFF might be quite big. So if you've got lots of space, go for it, but if you don't, it might be worth converting this into a JPEG. Okay, so... The the plugin we're going to use is called uh, QField. So we go to Plugins, Plugin Manager, and mine's already installed. But if you search for QField, you'll see the plugin called QField Sync. Sync, and all you do is turn that on, and then install it. And you will get a couple more options. You'll get a a new uh, menu under Plugins. And we are going to use the package for Q field option. And you'll also get these little options here, package for Q field shortcuts. Okay, so we're going to get to that because before I do that, I want to create a new layer. And this is going to be the vegetation layer. So let's go and put it in our project folder. Right, so we're going to create a new uh, point file. And it is for the vegetation or the alien vegetation. So let's just call it aliens and save okay and we can use the the points it's going to use the same coordinate reference system as every, every other layer in the project which is EPSG 4326 and then we're going to give it a couple of uh, fields or yeah fields so the first field is going to be label and it can have it's going to be text with a length of 80 and then maybe we can say species with the same, it can also be text with a length of 80. We'll have a date field, which will need to be date. And then photo, because you can take photographs with your cell phone and then link it back to the data. So let's let's have quite a long, uh, res reserve quite a few characters for that, for that field. So photo, and it's going to be text, and we'll add that as well. And then say OK. And then what we'll do, because currently the default color that's come through is, is quite a pathetic little brown color, which is going to get lost on a small cell phone screen in the field. So I want to change this to something I can see. So let's go to Symbology. I'll just make this a bit bigger so I can see all of my options. Okay, so I'll make it a size of 3. And then I'm going to make it a nice uh, pink color. That should stand out against the aerial photography. Then the labels I'm going to set to to label. So anything that is labeled will be labeled in the field. So it'll be like a live um, dynamic update. As soon as you label and create a new feature, it'll get labeled. And that can be species as well. So so you could choose any option here, but it's going to be label. And um, we're going to have a buffer, and then I'll s have an offset of three. And that should work nicely. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, is just edit the attributes form and I want to change the date to not be editable and it is going to basically uh, every time we add a new feature it needs to update immediately with the current date. So that's the format that, that it's going to be in. And then also for photo, photo is going to change to uh, an attachment. And that should be it for the fields. Ooh, got a message. Okay, so that should be it for the fields. So I'm going to close that down. Just say OK. And there's obviously no f nothing captured yet, so we won't see anything. But when you're in the field, you'll be able to capture your actual position. And then you will also be able to actually digitize. So you won't, actually, you won't need to necessarily go and stand at the point you capture. If you can see it, and you can also see it on the aerial photograph, you just take your finger tap on the screen to add a new feature so so you can do so you can do it both ways you can digitize in the field or you can actually capture it from the the current position of the phone right 
So the next thing is then to export this to QGIS. So we've activated our QField plugin and we need to go to plugins, QField sync and then package for QField. So now this will package this project into a folder and we just need to tell it what folder to use. In this example I'm just going to use the tutorial folder QField projects and GPS projects or project and then create. I shouldn't take too long and it should be a fairly small project. If I go and have a look on my desktop yep this is it. This project has got a whole bunch of layers added to it with a packaged QField project and the total size of that folder now okay is um, yeah nearly seven megabytes and the majority of that size comes from that image yeah so I mean there we go that's that's sitting at 6.9 so pretty much all of that size comes from that image so you don't need an image but it, it is sometimes nice to have a background image when you are in the field okay so we now have a folder with um, a packaged QField project and we need to put this on our phone so I am going to copy this folder then go to my phone and I'm gonna put it in documents so I'm just copying that whole folder with the packaged uh, layers and project and I'm copying it into documents on my phone there we go okay right now if you have um, installed the application the QField application on your phone you'll be able to now open this so let's uh, let me show you that step okay so here is my phone and I need to go and open that application so okay there it's on this field here so this is ooh, can we see this I'm not too sure how good the resolution is for this camera but anyway so if I open up QField by clicking on the little app Oh, seriously, I'm going to get messages now. Okay, so this is what QField looks like. And we're going to open a local project. So click on Open Local Project. And then I'm going to Internal Storage. And I'll go to the Documents folder. The folder that I copied onto my desk, onto my phone. And then open SolvoCorp, which is the project. And this is what we get. Okay, so that's everything there. And the layers, we can zoom in. And now your phone, uh, if you're in the field, I can I think my phone might be looking for a Okay, it's just just refreshing that screen. But if you're in the field and you've got a decent um GPS, you'll be able you should be able to see yourself now. We can see the layers. And we can start editing layers. So for instance, we'll select the aliens layer and collect click on the little pen to start editing okay close that down and what you get is uh don't know if you can how well you can see this on the on the camera but there is a cross in the middle of the screen so what you can do let's say let's say we don't feel like walking to go and capture this tree here we should be able to just put the cross over that tree and then click on plus and then we'll add some info information about that. So we'll just give it a, an ID of zero. And the label will be uh, wattle. Okay, well, wattle and wattle. And wattle. Uh, let's just give this something else for the sake of it. Ah, you see now, I can't type first tree okay done uh, now the date is automatic and we can actually go and take a photograph of that tree so let's say we wanted to take a photograph of that tree uh, we need to allow access to our camera um, the tree what looks like a tree take a photograph of that picture There we go. If we're happy with that, I think we can save it. And it saves our changes. And there we go. So now we have a, a feature that's captured. 
and we can move on and capture the next feature. Now if you want to use your GPS to capture the point that you're standing on, if I click on it now it's going to zoom all the way to Cape Town, so I'm nowhere near the point. So let's see what happens. Received position. Okay, then it zooms me all the way to Cape Town, and then you can actually capture the position that you're standing on. So you can either capture, <laughs> you can either capture, I keep moving my phone out of the uh, frame here. You can either capture the point that you're standing on, or you can manually digitize uh, features. So that's, we'll just bin that one. Um, and I don't know how to zoom back to my layers. It might be an easy process, I'm not sure. But I'm going to stop editing, and now we're in browse mode, and then those um, those features will be will now be saved. And we should be able to download that project, all the shape files, back to our project in um, in QGIS, because it's, it's essentially, it's updating shape files. It's not updating GPXs or any other file formats. So we should just be able to copy it off our phone and open the project again with all those edits in place. So that's how Q field works. It's a it's a fairly simple it's a fairly simple program, but very effective. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to zoom and find myself again. Oh, there we go. I have found myself. I don't know how that happened. That was a fluke. I think I zoomed out so far that I could see where I was as well as the the site in Pretoria. Okay, and that's that's how QField works. Um, I haven't used it much, so you'll probably find within a short period of time you're actually better at using QField than I am. But for the for for the time being, um, give it a crack and see how it compares to your Garmin eTrex, and if it's going to be a more efficient way for you to capture data. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to I'm just going to close down QField in my my phone and then I'm going to copy that folder back from my phone and I'm going to overwrite that project so let's go back to documents documents okay GPS projects I'm going to copy this whole folder go back to my desktop and delete the original and then paste this in again and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into that packaged uh, project and you'll see there's the photograph that I took. So so what it did was it created a folder inside the, the, the GPS project folder that was in my documents and that should be the picture that I took of my wall. Okay, so now that if that's a tree that you took, then it links to that. So we'll see how that links. But let's open up the actual packaged project and it should now it might take a while to open, but it should now have uh, one more point captured that I called Wattle and first tree captured. So let's wait for Q just to open and see if that worked. It should have worked. Okay, there we go. So that worked. And that was um, the manual digitizing that I used. And there we go, first tree. Now we should have a path name. There we go. There is a path name to that image. Now what you can now do, and maybe this is as good a time as any to show you this, you can use a plugin called Evers to connect um, to photographs that you've taken in the field. So let's see if we can, uh, if I can show you how to use that Evers plugin. Okay, so I think my Evers plugin is already activated. There it is there. If it isn't, you would need to go to plugins and then just, uh, I think it's a core plugin, so you might just have to turn it on. I'm pretty sure you don't have to, to install it. So if you go to installed plugins, just turn this one on, Evers, and that'll allow us to link to photographs. Okay, so I need to go to mine and I need to go to this menu here and I'm going to choose the event browser and that opens up this window. Okay, and I'm going to choose options, and I just need to change the settings now. So I want to choose under file path. I need to change that to photo. That's f that's already defaulting to photo. I think it's quite intuitive. Okay, and then the path needs to be relative, 
and we remember that okay and what else we need to go and change some other settings remember this I think that should work let's just see not quite there right so what I need to do is I actually need to choose the correct base path name so I'm going to this folder and then I'm going to right click and copy that path and then go back into my project and pa and replace this okay remember this save there we go okay now you you can also have um, a bearing field where it gives you an idea of what direction you were facing when you took the photograph I haven't included that here but that is something you can have and the bearing field will just have a little arrow just showing the direction that you were facing so with that um, database Eva's tool open we can open it up or oh, is it that one yes it is and then when you click on each of your features that you've captured it should pop up with a photograph with the photograph that you linked to for that particular tree or whatever it is donga um, bridge whatever you're taking a photograph of okay so it's a nice way for you to link to photographs that you took when you were in the field and that's using the evas plugin okay um yeah that's that's all i've got for you for this little tutorial it took a bit longer than i thought it would but i uh, hope you find it useful let me know how it goes i'd be interested to know the accuracy of your cell phone compared to your garmin e-tricks okay good luck with that have a good weekend cheers